In today's tutorial I'm gonna show you how to do a Tunisian ribbed hat. This is Tunisian crochet and you guess what? You're not having to change colors because the yarn does this on its own. Let's explore this pattern right now. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. In today's tutorial we're gonna learn how to make a Tunisian ribbed hat just like so. This yarn colors that you see is inside this brand new, this is a brand new yarn line called Bernat Super Value Stripes. It changes color really slowly so then it will then be yellow for a while and then it will change to pink, to green, to blue, to green, to other colors. Amazing, it's a really cool yarn and so you don't need to cut or trim any yarns because this is doing the work on its own. So when we go to do this particular pattern you're going to be working at, in a panel like so. So this is what we had in the beginning Tunisian series. So I'm making a hat and I'm using Peyton's Denimi on this one. So this is what I'm using for this. Okay, so you can see that you can just change the yarns as long as it complements the hook in order to keep the size. And so what happens with this one is that we're going to be making a flat panel and it's gonna stay the same size for a while until we get to a certain measurement as you see in the pattern and then we're gonna start decreasing stitches on this particular hook in order to make it work. What you're looking at here is a combination of a knit stitch and a Tunisian purl stitch and I'm gonna be showing you that in just a moment. To do this particular project you're gonna need a size six millimeter or size J afghan hook just like this and you're going to need it long enough so that you can get all of your stitches. This uh, hat is available in two sizes. It's a child and an adult and you'll just have two different sizes. So it says chain 72 to start if you're a child, chain 76 to start if you're an adult. So it's not much of a difference but it makes a huge difference on the sizing. So what we're going to be doing today is that I'm gonna just show you a mini example of how to do this particular stitch work because actually once you get started you realize how easy it is. So let's create a slip knot and I'm just going to be able to just to do maybe about 15. I want you to either do your 72 if it's a child or 76 if it's an adult. Okay, so what we want to do is that the first one never counts as one. So I'm only gonna do 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So you'll go to the size that you want. My purpose of this tutorial today is to show you how to do the knit stitch as well as the Tunisian pearl together in order to make that ribbing just like you see in the photograph. So once you have your chain done we're simply just gonna do everything the same way. So we're gonna skip to the second chain from the hook. So 1 and 2, turn it over and get the back loop only and just grab your stitch and, and just start collecting. So this is like regular Tunisian because it is regular Tunisian and we start collecting all the way back and go all the way. So you have to make sure that you can get enough of your stitches on your afghan hook. You won't need an, a really big afghan hook for this like uh, with the extension cord or anything like that. You should be able to get everything on. So just go all the way to the end collecting each one. So when, by the time you get all the way to the other side you should have the exact same quantity of chains that you started with. So you can just double count if you wish. It does make a difference because you are doing ribbing effect. Um, you want that ribbing effect to really show clearly and not be any abnormalities in the middle of it. So just continue to go all the way back. Okay and I'm done. Okay, so you're gonna have your whole mount. So this is what it looks like at this point and now I wanna come back in the other direction. We never turn our work when it comes to this particular project. So let's begin to go all the way back. How we go back is gonna be the identical no matter which row we're on going forward for the rest of this project. To begin to go back we just yarn over and pull through the first loop only and then yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two and we do that all the way back. So it's not until this next row that we're gonna start doing the ribbing effect. So the ribbing effect is based on uh, alternating of two stitches in a row of the knit stitch and two stitches in a row of the purl stitch. 
we're all the way back and now let's begin to start making this pattern. Regardless of the size that you're working on it's always gonna be starting off the same way. So we're gonna start off and do the knit stitch first. Okay, so the simple stitch is just always in front of the first vertical and then we grab the yarn and etc. We don't wanna do that. So what we want to do is that we want to go into the first vertical but go back through the back side Okay, and we're in actual fact we're through two loops. So you see how there's two strings there coming down right in there. We're going right directly in between them and out through the back of the project and then grab the yarn and pull, pull up. So go to the next one. So through the back. This is Tunisian. Okay, so now you've done that. So the next two are gonna be pearls. So what you have to do is that you have to get this yarn from back into the front. Now you could either just move your hand down in front and then get into the next vertical and then just go around or you can do what I would do is just use this hook, push this yarn forward. So don't go into the next vertical like this. G push the hook in front of that carrying string and then go in and pin. So and just pinch. So let me show that again. So the next two is a knit. So in diagonally. Okay, so the pearl just use this hook pull forward going into the next vertical pinch and pull. Okay, so we've covered this before in two other tutorials now in this series uh, and we do that twice in a row. So then the next two are knit stitch. So just invert uh, diagonally and then the next two are pearl. So just move that yarn in front pinch and pull. You don't really see this pattern starting to take effect until you're further on. So we're right, uh, we have one more to go. So this would be a knit stitch to keep in line and then the other, the, the other side we just go into a chain stitch right in the end and pull through. So we're ready to now to go backward just like we did before. So to go backward we just chain one to the first loop and then yarn over and pull through two. And we do that all the way back. So the ribbing doesn't really show its true colors until you're about an inch into the project from what I've been able to tell. Like so. So let's begin to do this pattern once again. So you don't really see it going on yet but it will. Just give it some time. So the key is to remember what you did. So we always started off with two knits two pearls, two knits, two pearls, two knits, two pearls. So we're just gonna start off and we're gonna knit where we've done the knit before. So just do the knit stitch for the first two because that's what you did already before and the next two is a pearl. So just move the hook down so the yarn is in front, pinch and pull. In front. Now I'm making it look simple on camera. This takes a bit of getting used to for the purling. Okay, so the next two are knit. The next two are purl. So just move the yarn in front. When I saw the purl for the first time I was really struggling with this stitch because my tension was always off. So you have to come up with your own way of doing things. Okay, so the next two are knit and then the next two are purl. See how I'm using my hook to instead of wasting valuable energy on this hand. So then the last one is a knit and then into the edge. Pull through. So let's go back. So yarn over, pull through the first one only. Yarn over, pull through two. So you're gonna do that continually. So what happens on this particular pattern is that you have to continue to make this panel just as you see it for a set number of inches. I believe for the adults it's I think 16 and a half inches. It's, it's a lot more than I thought um, but it does make sense by the time you see it done. So okay, so let's do again. So the first two are knits. So going in diagonally just like this. The next two are purl. So in. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you something. What happens is sometimes you might get lost in your pattern. Sometimes you forget about the second uh, pearl and it because it, sometimes it kind of looks close to this one. Just be conscientious that you are paying attention because you will see it in the next round and, and the great thing about Tunisian 
is that if you are screwing up in any way you can just pull it out and reverse to where you were uh, versus conventional knitting. If you if you drop something or you leave something behind it's almost impossible to fix it. Okay so the next two are, are pearls and I can slightly see the pattern starting to emerge and the next two are knit. So the knit is just ram it in there. The pearl is a little bit of extra hand motion but when you see it all done it looks amazing. So the last one's a knit and then the edge. Okay so just yarn over pull through one and then two all the way back. So this is a brand new yarn called Bernat Stripes and uh, it's a really neat thing with variegation that is a long distance instead of a really quick transition. Um, it does transition to the next color really quickly so um, it's not a slow transition to each color way. Okay so that's what you can see and when you pull out my other example here with the Peyton's Denimi you can really see that the ribbing looks amazing. Um, I think this is one of the coolest examples I've ever done. It looks like it's knitted. That's Tunisian right? It looks amazing on either side but definitely there is a good side to it. So let's review on what you need to do when you get to the certain height that you need and then you need to start decreasing it at the top. So here's what the pattern is going to look like once you get to the certain prescribed size. You're either gonna have five inches or six and a half depending on the size that you wish to go for. Now do the miracles of the internet. This is a fast forward example and this example was crocheted by my guest um, Della Wilkins. She's a Tunisian expert and so basically she has done this in advance so that I can learn how to do it myself. So I'm learning along with you. So let's uh, begin to learn how to do the decreasing now. So let's learn how to do the shaping of the top of the hat. So it says what we have is that it, you will have five inches or six and a half inches of your panel which is what we have here. It's gonna be a, a large rectangle and then it says work established rib pattern across. So it means that basically we've been doing the knit stitch and we have been doing the purl stitch. So whatever is prescribed in the row below we're gonna do the same above to keep the patterning consistent, right? So what's gonna happen it says work the established rib pattern across. So just follow what you see underneath and then just skip the next stitch. So if you're skipping for example a knit basically you're going to totally ignore that but just continue to go and we're just going to be able to follow this up so that the ribbing all looks consistent when it comes to the top of the hat. So it says we're going to skip the next and we're going to do that eight times all the way across. So every time we're going to do eight stitches we're going to skip the next and we're do that eight times. So basically we have to then go across and it says on the last uh, zero it says work the established rib pattern all the way across to the last zero so that means all the way to the last stitch but if you're doing the adult size to the last four stitches and do not turn and do the return pass. So basically there's a sizing difference on how you're going to shape the top of the hat at the end of these instructions. All of these instructions that you see here is all of the the um, the decreasing as we're going to do. So the next one we're going to do uh, is that we're going to go forward and then we're just going to skip so many stitches as well. So let's uh, begin to show you how to do this and let's start right now. So we're going to start and we're going to do the first eight stitches like we would have had been doing before. So even though the color of the project's changed it's still the same thing. So we're gonna knit the first two and then purl the next two. So I'm count, I have to count stitches at this time. So this is going to be stitch number four and then I'm gonna knit five, knit six, knit or purl seven and purl eight down here. Okay and now I have my eight in there so then it says to skip the stitch. So I'm gonna skip this first knit one and then I'm gonna knit into the other one because it's already knit. Okay so basically we're going to skip that one and the eight starts right here where I've skipped over. So this first one is one and then the next two are purling. Two for purl, three per, for purl, four for knit, five for knit. This is how I'm doing it myself. Six for purl, six for or seven for purl. Oh that's not a purl stitch. That's seven for purl and then eight for knit. So then that means that the next one that I'm about to do I'm gonna skip over. Okay so the next one is going to be skipping over the purl so then I'm gonna purl into the first uh, to the second one over. So I'm gonna skip. So it's creating these gaps in, in between is what you want. So that was one 
and then what we have here is one for purl, two for knit, three for knit, four for purl, five for purl, okay, six for knit, okay, seven for knit, okay, and then eight for purl. And then we skip over the next one, okay, and then the next one's in it. So you want to continue to do that all the way across so that the patterning is maintaining itself. So please do that same configuration going all the way across. When you get all the way to the other side, all you're just going to do then is just yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two as your return pass is going all the way across. So nothing in the return pass changes. All we're just doing is skipping stitches every eighth on the last one, it, which is gonna cause the work to start decreasing naturally and has a great look. So what I'm gonna continue this all the way back and then I'm gonna review this one more time. You can follow the instructions because basically the instructions just move along and you're just changing instead of skipping, or instead of doing eight and skipping, the next one is doing seven and skipping and then so forth and so forth in, this, in the instructions. So basically what's gonna happen is that it's going to naturally have all these ribs kind of meet up at the top of the hat as you go. So I'm all the way back and now I'm ready to begin again. So basically we're just going to follow with what we have already in the row below. So this time what we're going to do is that we're going to um, do the next seven stitches. Okay, so we're going to do the next seven and then skip one. So last time it was eight, this time it's seven. So one for knit, two for knit, uh, three for purl. This is what I'm saying in my brain. It just makes it easier for me. Four for purl. 5 for knit, 6 for knit, 7 for purl, and now I'm going to skip over the next one. Okay, so there's my 7. So then basically you can see that there's not an extra knit, there's only one here, and so we're not worrying about what's not there, we're only looking what is there. So the next one is a knit for 1, okay. So what we have is a knit for 1, uh, purl for 2, purl for 3, knit for four, knit for five, purl for six, purl for seven. So there's my seven. I'm gonna skip the next one and do you happen to see it's another knit one that I'm skipping? So no big deal and then we're going to then move over to the next one that you see here. So we're just gonna pick up the next one. So you're gonna do that all the way across and you're just going to be eliminating stitches out but following what, what's in the row below in order to make it work and it becomes really quite simple that way. Okay, so just continue to do that. This whole pattern is like that. Just follow the instructions. It'll take you all the way to row number seven. Remember the row, pa uh, the passes coming back are not an additional row. That's the return pass. And then basically what's gonna happen is that you're gonna end up with a nice shape at the top and then you're just gonna uh, draw a loop through everything and pull everything nice and tight. So basically each time you're gonna do one of these passes, it's gonna get more wool shape at the top and then being able to finish off your hat quite nicely. So that's how you would do a decrease um, stitches at the top with maintaining the pattern that is already there in order to look consistent. So here is the official model's hat and basically you can see how this ribbing kind of kept itself individualized and then these two ribs kind of ran into each other to make one. So basically what we're doing here is that um, with your decrease stitches you're maintaining that ribbing patterning as you're going up and basically then once you're done you're just going to sew the two sides together, pull everything together at the top and then you have everything nicely done just like so and that's what the inside looks like just like there. So here is a sample that's been completed and it's not yet put together but this is what it's gonna look like. So we've gone through the whole uh, formation just like you see here and you can see that it's kind of bowling up towards the top. That's because we've already started decreasing stitches at the uh, top so and here's the long end. We wanna draw all the way through and then we wanna pull it tight and then what we want to do then is on the inside we wanna sew the seam together so that you end up with a perfect hat just like so. So you wanna choose your colors carefully when you're going to sew everything together. Let's take a look at the inside of this hat. See the inside looks pretty too. 
So you can see that the, the stitch work is all sewn on the inside. And if you wanna do a pom-pom, there's instructions for using your fingers in order to make your pom-pom. So you don't need to buy a pom-pom maker in order to make that work. And then basically you can just do it exactly how it's shown. So hopefully this gives you an indication on how to make a rib stitch hat. Um, I'm making my own. I'm really, really, really proud of my hat. I have to say I cannot wait to see this come together and I think it's gonna be totally amazing at the same time. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. See ya.